welcome to 5 minutes about ADHD and autism. Uh, today I want to talk about when we see uh, different on a child. <clears throat> I'm a teacher and I'm a mother and uh, and both as teacher and as mother I am I have kids with autism and ADHD. <clears throat> Sorry. And uh, and again and again I realize that we see two very different worlds often. Sometimes the parents are crying because uh, the kids won't do anything. They can't manage anything. They are crying or reacting with stress or panic or uh, anger all day uh, after school. And, uh, and the school said, what? No problem here. It must be you. The problem must be you. Uh, I've been there myself uh, when my uh, son, who is grown up today, the, my eldest son, uh, when he was a, a little child, we didn't know he had ADHD or autism. And again and again, um, we, we tried to tell the, the kindergarten or the preschool that, that there was something wrong, that uh, he had difficulties, difficulties we, we couldn't handle. And again and again, the school told us that then we had to worry about it because they, they see a boy who might be a little lazy, might be a little unmature, but but he was okay. We couldn't understand it. And we, we put so much energy, energy in looking inside. What have we done wrong? How can we uh, raise him better? How can we um, teach him uh, not to react this way as he was doing when he was together with the kids on his own age? Uh, and sort of all kind of that stuff um, and we were so sad we were so tired we were so filled with the uh, stress because this feeling it is my fault it couldn't go away uh, he was i think he was about 10 or 11 years old before the teacher started believing us and then it went fast then he was um uh, diane had the diagnosis first ADHD and uh, when that was medicated it was obvious that it was not alone so uh, again he got a new uh, an, an extra diagnosis as, as autism and um, but we spent we spent about eight or nine years fighting the system fighting for somebody to believe us even our grandparents didn't always believe us because when they, when our kid was at their place, he was so sweet. He was so kind. He was sleeping a lot, but he was so sweet. But when he came home, when he came home, <laughs> he he reacted wildly. So it was it was obvious for us too that it must be our fault. <clears throat> Sometimes it's the opposite way. It is uh, teachers. Uh, who, who's trying to run this classroom uh, and being a good leader in the classroom but but it can't be done because one of the one of the pupils is jumping on the tables he's speaking uh, every second he's uh, teasing the others he, he makes problems he makes noise he had conflicts and he isn't happy he's sad and when I am a teacher and I call the mom and dad or speak to them um, and they say, what? That must be your problem because I have no problems. No problems at home. He is such a kind, such a sweet boy. Then as a teacher, I can feel, what am I doing wrong? What, what is it I cannot do uh, as they can do at home? And I just want to use these five minutes to say it is totally normal. Both of both. Uh, of my experience is normal because when our kids are home they often relax and they let all the stress loose and actually it's good because if they kept it inside they would well they would uh, ruin themselves and actually I think we know it from ourselves if I am having a very stressful day at work None of my uh, colleagues will notice. But when I came home, my family will definitely notice that this is a <laughs> day when mother wants quietness and uh, everybody to behave nice. But um, 
So I think we know it from ourselves that reaction might not come to the place it has a roots. Uh, at the other hand, the teacher is having um, a lot of issues to take care of. There is a child who needs absolutely quietness. And there are kids who, um, who need an extra hand because they are sad or they are hyperactivity or uh, they have hyperactivity. Or the teacher needs to see all the kids. And even though she is the perfect teacher, obviously, um, there will be noise, there will be conflicts. And some of our kids can't handle it. They can't handle the stress, the, the unforeseen, the, um, all the impulsive uh, um, things was happening around them. They can't have it and they, and they cannot keep it inside till they came home. So they will react there and in the school. But when they came home, they might have reacted. They might have let it out and they can be calm and relax. And maybe they are allowed to sit and play a iPad or a phone or a PC the rest of the day. So the mother and dad will never see the problems. I just want to tell you that it is normal and that you need to listen to the other side. We all need to listen. Teachers and parents, we need to listen because what the other side is experiencing with your child is a part of your child's life, which you might be the only one who can help with.